If you've ever googled best hair loss treatment, you've probably seen everything from pills, PRP to stem cells, and maybe to even shampoos. I'm here to tell you what actually works based on science, patient outcomes, and what I prescribe every day in my practice. I am Dr. Ko, a hair transplant surgeon in Seoul. Today, we are ranking the most popular hair loss treatments from best to worst, including some you should absolutely avoid. Let's get started. I am ranking based on four factors. One, effectiveness. Does it actually grow or keep hair? Two, scientific evidence. Are there real studies behind it? Three, safety. Is there any serious side effects? Four, long-term value. Can you actually stick with it? Ready? Let's start with the best. Finasteride is the OG, the gold standard. It blocks DHT, the hormone responsible for male pattern baldness. Think of DHT like a slow poison to your hair follicles. Finasteride turns off the faucet, so the follicles stop shrinking. In clinical studies, over 80% of men either maintained or improved their hair. Most see visible result in 4 to 6 months, especially in the crown and mid scalp. Side effects? They exist. Mainly reduced libido or mild ED in 1 to 3% of patients. But here's the truth most men never notice any issues, and for many who do, it's reversible if they stop or reduce the dose. This is the one I personally take. Enough said. Dudasteride is like finasteride but on steroids. If finasteride is a sedan, dudasteride is a turbocharged SUV. It blocks not one, but two types of the enzyme that creates DHT, type 1 and 2. That makes it even more potent. In Korea and Japan, we use it often for patients with advanced thinning, especially those who didn't respond well to finasteride, and it's shown stronger regrowth in some studies, particularly in the vertex and crown. But the flip side, longer half-life, slightly higher side effect rate, and it's not FDA approved for hair loss in the US yet. This isn't for beginners, but in the right hands it's a game changer. Minoxidil is a vasodilator, meaning it widens blood vessels and increases blood flow to your follicles. It doesn't block DHT, but it helps revive miniaturized hairs, especially in the vertex area. The topical form, 5% foam or liquid, works decently if used twice daily, but many patients hate the mess. That's why low-dose oral minoxidil is becoming more popular. Same mechanism, better compliance, and promising results. Side effects Oral minoxidil can sometimes cause lower blood pressure, water retention, or body hair growth. That's why we start very low, like 0.25 to 1.25 mg. I use it frequently, especially when combined with a DHT blocker. They complement each other. Okay, let's talk about PRP. This is the natural booster shot for your scalp. We draw your blood, spin it down to extract platelet-rich plasma, and inject it back into thinning areas. PRP is rich in growth factors that can stimulate weak follicles and support hair regrowth. The good? It's drug-free and uses your own biology. The bad? It's expensive, requires multiple sessions, and results vary widely. I recommend PRP for early thinning post-transplant healing or patients who want an extra push but on its own. It's not enough for significant baldness. This is where things get exciting and risky. Early trials like the PP405 siRNA therapy show real promise for regenerating follicles, not just stimulating them. But here's the catch. Most of these treatments are still in phase 1 or 2 trials. Long-term safety, dosage, and real-world result still unclear. If a clinic says they'll inject stem cells and you'll grow a full mane in 3 weeks, you should run. If you're truly deficient in something, like iron or biotin, yes, supplements can help, but 
For male pattern baldness, they don't block DHT or regrow follicles. They're fine for supporting scalp health or breakage, but they won't fix genetic loss. Think of these like multivitamins. Good to have, but not the solution. Let's be real. No shampoo is going to reverse baldness. They can improve scalp conditions like dandruff or oiliness, which helps medication work better. But the Grow Hair Fast claims, pure marketing. If shampoo cured baldness, I'd be out of business. Here's how I typically approach treatment, Norwood level 2 to 3. I start Finasteride Pismonoxidil, and PRP is optional. In case of Norwood level 4 to 5, I consider Dutasteride if Finasteride failed, and add oral minoxidil. For post-hair transplant patients, I tell them to continue meds to protect existing native hair, and always tailor the treatment to the patient by monitoring labs and adjusting doses as needed. Hair medications are powerful, especially when started early, but they have limits. They don't rebuild a receded hairline or a fully bald crown. That's where surgery comes in, ideally supported by medication for long-term success. We don't just move hair. We create design, density, and balance, while medications protect what you still have. Hair loss isn't your fault, but falling for the wrong treatment is avoidable. Stick with what's proven, not trending. If you're ready to start treatment or wondering if it's too late, I'd love to help.